This is Auto Trader UK, where we drive the latest, the greatest, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So strap in, subscribe, and if you have been watching, don't stop. Don't ever stop. Hey Trader Gang, got a little bit of a different type of video for you today. Something you might not know about me is that I'm rubbish at watering plants. Yes, I am. I also love cars, love bikes, but one of my other passions is planes. I'm a bit of a plane geek, and I wanted to share something with you today that I learned recently about how the world of electric cars is leading to a world of electric planes. Short version, there's a plane that uses Tesla batteries, and I got to have a go in it. Anyway, as you'll know, we're running a Skoda Enyaq long-termer for a while, and as part of exploring that electric car, Skoda gave us a pretty cool opportunity to explore another electric vehicle that I couldn't possibly say no to. And yes, it's an electric plane. This is the Pipistrel Velis Electro, and it's the world's first type-certified electric passenger plane, mostly used for pilot training. So, electric plane, big deal. But this thing, and some others just like it, are very likely to become a huge deal in the not too distant future and might end up becoming the electric cars of tomorrow. I'll explain, but before that, let me talk you through the plane and how it compares with the Enyaq or any other electric car. It's based on the petrol powered Pipistrel Velis, but the company have removed the engine and replaced it with a 60 kilowatt electric motor attached to a single propeller. The Enyaq has a 150 kilowatt motor, but where the car uses an 82 kilowatt hour battery, the plane has a 24.8 kilowatt hour battery pack that lives in the luggage compartment behind the passenger cabin. What is the point of this and how does it affect us? Well, there's a couple of benefits. As we all know, EVs are cheap to run. According to Skoda, the cost per mile in the Enyaq is four pence. The cost per mile of an equivalent ICE car is 22 pence per mile. And there are even bigger savings with the plane. The electric Velis, costs two pence per mile versus the petrol one, which is 80 pence per mile. There's another benefit as well. Both the car and the plane reduced noise by around 50%. And to find out how quiet the plane was, my pilot did our pre-flight checks, fired it up, and away we went. No mucking around at all. Now, obviously, as much as I love planes, going up in a new type of aircraft is always gonna be nerve wracking. And pretty soon it was time to take off and I was bricking it slightly but in for a penny, in for a pound, off we went. The key thing you notice with an electric aircraft, a bit like an electric car, is the acceleration is very quick. There's a ton of torque. And within a couple of hundred meters, we were airborne, taking in the sights over London. And what was really cool to me was how few vibrations there were. In other planes I've flown in, the whole cockpit shakes from the engine, but this was just smooth. And again, we could talk to each other without the headphones on if we chose to. For this trip, we spent a lot of it at around the 1,000 feet mark, cruising at 80 knots with the motor at just under 2,000 RPM, drawing 24 kilowatts of power. By my calculations, we have a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack, remember? We could stay airborne for around an hour. 80 knots is 148 kilometers per hour, or around 90 miles an hour. So we weren't going very far in that time, but it was quite lovely. And it made me start to wonder why there aren't more electric planes in the world right now and whether that would change in the future. Here's the thing, batteries in their current form are not ideal for long haul air travel. In comparison to gasoline, batteries are super heavy and not very energy dense. Jet fuel has an energy density of 9.6 kilowatt hours per liter, which makes it around 50 times more energy dense than batteries. But because the internal combustion process is so inefficient, a thousand pounds, what's that in kilograms, I'm not sure, of jet fuel only gets around 14 times more power than a thousand pounds of batteries. That means creating an electric plane that can travel the same distance as a normal aircraft would need you to carry a huge battery, which would give you the power and range in theory, but carrying a huge battery adds a huge amount of weight. So it's never gonna work. If we wanna fly long distances on an electric aircraft in the way that we're used to from a commercial airliner, we need batteries that basically haven't been invented yet. We'd also need planes that haven't been invented yet. The airline industry would lose money developing new aircraft, electric ones, 
long haul electric ones that weren't as good as the ones that we already have. But that's long haul. Short haul is a totally different story. Here's the thing, airlines are heading down a path where they've started to be punished for short haul flights because the world is now very aware that planes are bad for the environment, especially when they're doing lots of short hops because most fuel is burned during takeoff. In fact, some governments have started banning short haul flights in order to mitigate the environmental impact of flying. Back in June 2020, France confirmed it would ban short distance flights under two and a half hours. The Netherlands voted to prohibit commercial flights between Schiphol and Brussels airport for the environmental reasons. And Belgium introduced a boarding tax, give me that money, for short haul flights to put people off using them and encourage use of the train. Even where governments allow it, some organizations, including parts of the BBC, have rules in place to stop employees hopping on planes when they can just as easily use trains for short journeys. And ordinary people on the street are now realizing that maybe they don't need to fly short distances quite as often. The other big factor is that aviation fuel massively expensive. So it now makes less and less sense to run a short haul airline service using traditional planes. And all of those factors are going to force airlines to invest in, drum roll please, electrified aircraft. With electric planes, there are no emissions. Fuel is so cheap it might as well be free in comparison. And they'll be able to operate in places where traditional aircraft have been legislated out of the sky or where electric planes just make better financial or environmental sense. It's already happening. An aircraft maker called Ampere has built a six-seater hybrid plane that's been flying a route in Hawaii. It's basically an upgraded Cessna 337, and it went from Kahuli in Maui to Hana, which is around 50 miles or two and a half hours by car, and back on a single charge. Cape Air, a company based out of Massachusetts, recently ordered the Alice, a nine-seater plane developed by a company called Eviation. And this thing can do 240 knots at 10,000 feet for the unpressurized version. And there's a pressurized version that will go up to 32,000 feet at 265 knots. And it can go about 650 miles on a full charge. That's like London to Paris and almost back again. And the running costs are like $200 per flight for the airline. So imagine how cheap our tickets could be on a plane like that. Another big benefit is that just like the Velis that I flew in, which was pretty much silent compared to a normal plane, electric aircraft can fly above or even into cities and towns without disturbing the locals. You could have an airport at the end of your garden full of aircraft without much noise pollution or air pollution. And notice I said aircraft, not necessarily planes. Now, remember how earlier I was linking electric cars to electric planes? Well, the next logical step is for this technology to transfer to flying cars. I know, it sounds mad, so let me rephrase that. Urban air mobility. Basically, air taxis or flying drones that you sit in and can take off from the top of the building and land on top of another building. A journey that might take you two hours in traffic in a car can be done in like 10 minutes in the air. And because it's all electrically powered, nobody would necessarily know it's even happening unless they look up. Uber are working on the tech to run the logistics for air taxis and are partnering with manufacturers to create the aircraft as we speak. And there are various manufacturers designing these things right now, including Xpeng, one of the biggest car companies in China. They unveiled one called the Kiwi Go Go and another one called the X2. I'm not sure I'd get on either of those based on the names, but you know, it sounds promising. It sounds mad, but electricity is the thing that's making all of this happen. And I think it will happen. 20 years ago, nobody thought we'd have electric cars dominating the market. And yet here we are with an electric Skoda and an electric plane that uses batteries from a Tesla. Mad. Anyway, a little bit of a tangent to the normal car stuff. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Would you get into a flying electric car? Would you get into an electric plane? As always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I'm going to go water the plants now. <laughs>